So this is Matthew Kaczmarek. I serve as the United States District Judge for the Northern District of Texas here in the Amarillo Division. And on a daily basis, I handle uh, cases that come to federal court and those involve uh, civil, criminal, intellectual property matters. Um, and every day I read, I spend most of my day reading. So uh, I have directly benefited from good uh, teachers who uh, taught me to love reading. And it's my understanding uh, each of you are reading that and The Waiting Game. And I have five children as well, and I spend a lot of time reading with them. So I hope it's, um, it's a book that will encourage you to fall in love with reading because you'll use it for the rest of your life. And uh, we are moving now to Bat and the Waiting Game, Chapter 15, Thor's Garden. Carrots, corn, and kale, Bat told Mom on the drive home from school. Carrots, corn, and kale, Bat told Janie when she got home interrupting the song she was singing. Carrots, corn, and kale, Bat whispered to Thor as he fed him his afternoon bottle, cradling his squirming, eager black and white body. Thor was getting strong, Bat noticed. He filled Bat's hands now and his snuffling snout pushed into Bat's palm as he searched for the bottle. I think your little friend is ready for solid food, Mom said. She was in the kitchen with Bat, drinking a cup of tea and watching him feed the kid. Carrots, corn, and kale, Bat said again. Yes, said Mom, those sound like great choices for a skunk garden. But in the meantime, let's try something a little easier to digest. She set down her tea and took a slice of bread from the loaf by the toaster. She pulled away the crust and cut just the softest center of the slice into little cubes. Then she dipped some of the formula onto the plate of bread cubes and waited until it had soaked in and the bread was soft. Then she set the plate on the floor and said, let's see what he thinks. Bad sat on the floor and made a V with his legs around the plate of bread. Gently, he set Thor down. At first, the little kid stumbled as he got his legs underneath him, but his tiny nose went up like he smelled the food and he wove his way over to the plate his tail bushy behind him. When he got to the plate of bread, he sniffed around for a while. Bat didn't know if he would eat it. Maybe he doesn't like bread, he said to Mom. Give it a minute, Mom said. She had sat down on the floor, too, right next to Bat, and they watched together as Thor climbed up onto the plate with his front legs and dipped his mouth down toward the food. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Then his tongue emerged and touched the bread. And he licked it, and he got even closer, opened his mouth, and took a bite. And you can see that there. He's eating, Bat said. He sure is, Mom said. Thor chomped down half the plate of formula-soaked bread, and then he turned away from it. Bat scooped him up and wiped his face clean with a napkin Mom had handed him. They grow up fast, don't they, Bat? Mom said. Bat nodded. He was proud of Thor, but he knew what it meant that Thor was learning to eat on his own. It meant that he was one step closer to being able to return to the wild, one step closer to not needing Bat anymore. I kind of wish he still needed the bee bottle, though, Bat said. Babies can't stay babies forever, Mom said. She stroked Bat's hair as he stroked Thor. Thursday afternoon, Bat and Tom and Israel took the big black truck to the nursery to get supplies from the skunk garden. Bat and Israel had written up a list of supplies, and Mom had checked in, checked it the night before. She'd crossed off shovel and hoe because she said they already had those things in the shed. That still left carrot, seeds, corn, seeds, kale, seeds, and fertilizer. Not a very exciting list. When they found everything they needed, Tom drove them all back to Bat's house so they could get to work. Bat had never been at his house without another member of his family being there, and he wished suddenly that Janie were home. Not because he wanted her to make him a sandwich, not because he needed anything from her, just because it would have been nice to have her there. He found the key just where Mom had promised to leave it, under the second biggest potted plant on the front porch, because the biggest one was too heavy to move. And he used it to open the front door. Then, standing in the hallway with Tom and Israel, Bat felt suddenly shy. But Israel raced straight through the kitchen, down the steps, and into the backyard. Come on, Bat, let's garden. Half an hour later, the garden box was planted. 
Tom had found a couple of pieces of wood and some old paint in the shed. And when Bat and Israel were done smoothing over the dirt, he said, what do you boys think of this? And there's Thor's garden. It was a signpost that read Thor's garden. It's perfect, said Bat. Tom hammered the sign into the dirt and they all stood together admiring, admiring it. Now they just had to wait for the plants to grow. And that is chapter 15. So after you finish this book and continue on your trajectory of reading and learning to love reading, you may soon graduate to bigger books like this that you may have to use one day when you become a lawyer or a judge. But right now, have fun with fun books, and I encourage you to keep reading.